Hello everybody, it's Wendy here from the Indigo Blue Team. I've got a journal page that I'm going to make today. It's on one of the 8x8 sheets from the um, journal book. And I'm going to start off with the Victorian Garden stamp set, but I'll be bringing in a few other stamp sets and some dies as well from ages ago. I think when it was one of the magazines that they were included with. So I've made a start and all I've done so far is um, torn some pieces of old book page and stuck them down with a slap it on mat. And then I've just gone over that with some white gesso in order to knock the text back a little bit and give me a bit of an even um, layer, if you like, for, for working on. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get some colour onto the background. And to do that, I'm going to use some Dispress Spray Stains in some greens and blues. So I've got mainly the spray stains, speckled egg, shabby shutters and bundle sage. And then I might come in with an oxide with the tumbled glass, depending on what the effect is, is looking like. So I'll just put those to one side and I'll put down some deli paper to catch any overspray. You can see this has been used before. So I'm going to start with some bundled sage and this is just a spray stain so it doesn't have any um, anything in that needs uh, a little ball bearing or anything to, um, to shake it up. So I'm just going to give this a bit of a, a spray and then we'll come in with some shabby shutters. And then at the top, I'll come in with some speckled egg. I'm not really worried about getting complete coverage. I just want to get an idea of, of colour on there. And before I leave that to dry, I'll just run over it with a little bit of kitchen roll just to take some of that excess off because I don't really want these sort of drippy textures on this one. I don't mind a bit, but I don't want too much. Maybe I might just add a little bit more down here. I don't want to remove the colour completely. Okay, that's looking better. I might give it a bit of oxide spray and the oxides will sit more on the surface. Oh, there we go. They like to be buffs. And I want to leave that to dry. I'll pop it to one side and if it's not dry enough by the time we come to do the next thing, then I'll, um, I'll dry it with a heat gun. So for now, I'm just going to move it to one side and get rid of these. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is to add in some leaves and flowers and bits and pieces. So I've got some already from my scrap box which I'll just put into a view in the camera so you can see what I've got and I'll explain where they've come from. So I've got some die cut leaves. These were done using this die set. I can't remember, I think this was with one of the um, magazines, as I say, quite some time ago. I know they were available on their own for a little while. Oh yeah, it says practical publishing on the back. They were available on their own for a little while, um, but I'm not sure if, if they still are. But what I've done is I've cut out some of the leaves from background bits and pieces that I had um, lying around in my box. Um, there's another one that got cut out of a piece of gel press background. 
and then these this is from the latest magazine just bring that in so you can see here it is this piece here so i've cut that out um, stamped and embossed that and then cut it out and then i've got some other bits again from my box of leftovers or bits where i stamp more than i actually need so that i've got extras for when i when i want them and these come from squiggly flowers this one and then these two are from squiggly leaves and the bird i've got here is one of the collector's editions morris bird collector's edition number 59 so i've got that bird there so we'll quickly get some colour on the ones that need it and hopefully by then our um, background will be almost dry. Right, I've got a couple of shades of green. I've got some um, terra and some, I think it's shepherd's green. So I'm just going to get some on these leaves, put a little bit on my mat with some water. A bit more water, I think. get some colour on those. I'm going to go in with some of the lighter shade just to give it a bit of texture but you can see I'm not being exact. This is just get some colour on. Oops. You want it to be precise there's no reason why you shouldn't but I want to make this a bit more watery that's a bit too thick at the top there and then in with that lighter colour give it a green stem a little bit of maybe brown and a bit of yellow on the let's put those lids on before they get October so a little bit of yellow ochre Just a little bit of burnt sienna. Okay. And these squiggly flowers, they're kind of like seed heads, aren't they? And a bit of brown in there before it dries. So it gives it that kind of watercolour effect.
just got a little bit too watery so that I hardly could see the, the brown. There we are, that's better. This paint pot, I think it's got a split in it and every time I open it up I seem to get, you see that bubble there, look at that, how ridiculous is that? So I get it, there's the split look, I get it all over my fingers, so that's a bit of a pain, so I'll just give those a bit of water and then dry them off, try and be a bit cleaner. these ones good thing about stamps like this is depending on what colour you do them you can completely change the mood of the piece that you're making and if these were in bright colours it would give it a completely different look wouldn't it whereas this has got I don't say it, a bit of an autumnal feel to it can't believe I'm saying that while it's still summer okay Right, the bird. Where should we go with the bird? It needs put a bit of brown on its tail, or maybe a bit of brown on its feathers in general. And for its beak, I'm just going to go in with a bit of fine liner pen. Do that little black bit. Okay, and then the last thing to do are these roses, I guess they are, and I'm going to do those in the yellow as well so that the colour palette kind of stays the same. Sure, they are roses. They look a bit blousy for roses. They could be peonies, I suppose. I get all the petals before I move over to doing the leaves. Okay.
of that lighter green just to bring that out a bit. Just bob in with a little bit of a brighter yellow. This is daffodil. In some of those areas just to highlight a little bit. To carrot gold, it's another translucent paint, and that will just go in the middle there in those seed heads. Okay, that's everything coloured, so I'm going to clean up this paint and get that out of the way. Let me just double check, because usually what happens is I clean it all up and then I think, ah, I need something. Um, maybe for my sentiment, I've stamped this one out. I always believe that something amazing is about to happen. That comes from the gladioli set it's this one here so I've stamped that and I thought that'll go nicely with what I've done so I might just put some paint on here while I've got it on my mat and I think I'll use a sort of yellow and green and cut it down later but at least I've got the colour on it all the paints there. Okay, all right, let's get rid of all of this. And I'll put these to one side while we do some work on the background. background that we've done it's just about dry so I'm going to finish it off with the heat gun so excuse a bit of noise right so on here I'm going to create some um, grasses and other plants at the bottom and the stamp sets that I'm using that I'm using several actually so there's this one, Victorian Garden, and I'm going to be using some of these um, grass plant um, stamps. And then I'm using two much older ones. There's this one, Tall Grasses, and this one that's called Umberlate. Now these are really old, you can tell by the packaging. Um, they are indigo blue, uh, and I just have to I've sort of cut the top off to fit them into one of my storage um, systems. But these two don't always come out very often. And I think that's a shame because they're, they're really great for this kind of um, background. 
So I'm going to ink up the first of these stamps. Um, let's have a look. I think I'll start with this tall grasses one. It's quite a, a wide one. So I'll get a... And I'm going to use some of the Distress inks to stamp with. So I'm going to use some of these. And let's see how we how we get on. I'm going to start with Forest Moss. to one side, get rid of all those inky things and make some space. So forest moss, ink up my stamp and just stamp slightly off. Same at the other side. That doesn't matter because I've got loads of others to fill in with. So that was nice moss. Let's give the stamper a quick clean. in here with some twisted citron which is a, a lighter green I might bring rustic wilderness in as well as a another darker one Smokes again for this one. I'm going to pop that just there. Have some rustic wilderness then. a little bit too green green but that's okay because we're building up the layers and the textures at the bottom here um, just put the wrong lid on the wrong stamp so that's not right, so I'll we'll stick wilderness on there. That's better. And forest moss is here. This one I'm going to mix the colours a little bit so I'll put some forest moss at the bottom. Oh, that lost its sticky. I'll just really quickly just to keep it firm on the on the acrylic block, a little bit of glue stick. Um where was I? Yeah, a bit of forest moss down the bottom. I might have some mowed lawn on it as well. And bring that in here. That's 
good. And we'll do that again. Okay, so we've got a sort of meadowy thing going on. All right, let's get the right lids on the right ink pads. Mogolon, Twisted Citroen. And pop those two on the side. So I think in terms of stamping, that's as far as I need to go. Okay, all right, so the next thing I want to do is to arrange the things that I've cut out. I want that to be a corner piece. So they're going to come down the bottom. These cut leaves that I'm going to use up here And these I'm going to have down the bottom here. This lovely die cut cow parsley, whatever it is, sort of echoes these a little bit. So I want to have that here. And Okay. I'm just wondering whether or not to cut these out a bit more, but that'll take ages. No, I'll go with it, it'll be fine. Oh, these are all cut to the edge, as is that. Hmm, I wonder. If I decide to do this, I'll cut all this fussy cutting out of the video so you don't have to watch if it takes ages what i'm going to do is just really really quickly with some really runny paint Should have done this bit first, really. Just take that to the edge. stem. There we are, I think that's going to look better. Yeah, 
rid of those bits. And that paint. Right, so I think we're good to go now. So the first thing I'm going to stick down is this and I'm going to use my grab and go. Just put a bit on my finger as well for these fine stems. Let's see if I can pick this up without it breaking. So I want this down here. Mm. the first bit. And then some of these bits that I want. Again, some grab and go. Told you those stems were fine. See, that's come off, but never mind. I'll just glue it back in place. Slide that on in under there. Right, so that's the bottom part done. So let's see how we want to arrange these so that they're coming in from this corner. I want it to kind of look like they're on a bush that's hanging down. So we'll 
some greenery maybe behind them up here the brown ones at the, at the back. What do I think? Do I think I don't really want the brown ones at all? I'm not sure. I think that makes a bit of corner. And then I'll just have this curling around the bottom. leave it alone can I? I like the brown because it tones in with this. Oh what to do, what to do. Either way I think those are going in there so let's get them down. Let's cut those top bits off. Yeah, we'll have this curling round. I wonder if I've got any more of these leaves in my little bag. find any so we'll go with what we've got so I'm going to put this on here those off. Right, I'm going to do the same with this bird. I'm just going to quickly cut off the white border that I left on it. So that it matches everything else. Start out with a plan and then it completely changes part way through.
Okay. That's going in there. sentiment over here somewhere but I need to cut it down like to round those corners so I'll get my rounding punch. With my Stabilo pencil and a green one. onto the edge. Okay, and then I don't know if I'm done or if I just want to add a little bit of extra splash. And what I'll start off by doing is cutting those off. Um, 
you know what? I think I'm going to just give it a spray of the new <clears throat> Distress Spritz. <clears throat> just to give it a bit of gold highlight, maybe. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> pardon me. So this is Fossilised Amber. And I'm just going to... at that so that will give it some sparkle when that dries always believe that something amazing is about to happen okay so there you have it there's my journal page using loads of indigo blue stamps we started with the victorian garden to make the meadow at the bottom added in bits and pieces from squiggly leaves and squiggly flowers. We used um, collector's edition for the Morris bird, gladioli stamp, which is where the sentiment came from, and pieces from the different magazines, including the most recent one, which is where the, the flower cluster came from, and one that goes way back for the, um, the die cut leaves, but you can use any um, die cuts that you've got. That would work just fine, wouldn't it? So there we have it. There's my journal page for today. Hope you like it. And if you make anything, please share it on our Indigo Blue Facebook page. We'd love to see what you've been up to and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.